and this crazy white boy. Save your alleged gun jamming ass. And just bounce with your paper and drugs. Like Casper the Ghost. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Luca and today we are going to be talking about Power Book 4 Force Episode 1. Let's get straight into the video. They say this is a big rich town. Yeah. Oh my days, I've missed Tommy Egan so much. You cannot understand how much I was lacking Tommy in my life. He was my favorite character in all of the power shows combined. Seriously, I love Raising Kane. I love Ghosts. I love the original power show. But out of all of the characters we have seen so far, Tommy Egan is by far my favorite. Oh between his sassiness, his just flippant personality. Just bear with me. Yo, Tommy, come on, man. I need a job now, not later. I got mouths to feed, you feel me? I just said bear with me. I am having difficulties. What the fuck did your stupid ass not understand about that whole statement? I love the fact that his first resort just tends to end up being killing somebody, even though it could easily be handed by a conversation. Tommy just has an inability to think rationally, I think, and it might have been maybe two years of copious drug use, I'm not sure. But if any of you remember from the original Power show, he did go on a bit of a coke bend after killing Holly. He's a bit unhinged. Uh, my thoughts on the show, on episode one overall, I love it. I'm just getting out of the way so far. 50 Cent and Courtney, you have made an amazing universe. Pat on the back is amazing. It's just so great. Uh, Joseph Zakora as Tommy E. Bruh. He kills it. As per usual, Tommy kills his role. I don't know how, but they seem to have kind of taken every good aspect about Tommy Egan and everything that the, the fans liked in the show and then just cracked that shit up to 11. It's amazing. I haven't had a void filled this well ever, really. The 50 Cent and Courtney did something that the MCU and Disney Plus shows couldn't even do. So, that's saying something, really. Tommy Flanagan as Walter Flynn. If you don't, if you guys don't know who he is, uh, maybe check out Signs of Anarchy because that's where I f uh, first met him. And dude, amazing, he's amazing. Tommy Flanagan is perfect, and I can't wait to see him be a rival to Tommy Egan because Walter Flynn is, as far as we're led to believe, like the ultimate head of. The Chicago crime syndicates kind of thing so for any of you who are like my Marvel fans or my DC fans it'll be the equivalent to Wilson Fisk taking over Karen Page has been found give me your jacket Carmine Falcone. I'm Falcone. Forgive me, young man. I forget what your name is. Or perhaps I never knew it. Gilzine, sir. Gilzine. Tell Ms. Mooney she's too impetuous. If she wants to kill policemen, she has to ask permission. Sir. Is the only other closest comparison I guess you could make? The way that Walter Flynn conducts his family, he conducts his business, it's very interesting, and accent that comes out uh, in his family is great, because it seems like his kids are raised in America, but whenever they're around their dad, 
some accent comes along as if it's just, I don't know, maybe the comfort of their own home or something. I ain't fucking sure, but it's great. Um, Lily Simmons as Claudia Flynn is amazing. Lily brings clear sense of power and structure to the family that her brother is surely lacking. Vic Flynn or Victor Flynn is just very uneven and hot-headed and his first interaction with Tommy proves it. I was really fucking hoping that we would have seen Tommy beat the shit out of like the son of a crime family on the first episode because what better way to start a show than to have your main lead beat the shit out of the main competitor's son uh, and not only deliver a blow to the family but it'd be one of those things where you've disrespected my honour in more ways than one now. Uh, now I have to fuck you up. Lily Simmons as Claudia, she seems like she is a bit power hungry in and of herself, and unlike her, uh, not unlike her brother but in a more calculated sense. Like, first time we meet her, she sat in her father's chair. She's drinking his favorite scotch or uh, whiskey. And it's, he calls her out on it. And it's fucking great. I love it when actors call people out for their shit the same way an audience member would. And when that's written in the dialogue, it just goes to show that how great the writing is. The questions that you want answered are answered. They're asked. And it's fucking great. Like, Shane Harper as Victor Flynn. Uh, Shane manages to play Vic, Victor Flynn with uh, a certain arrogance. The same way that Drew was played in the original Power series. You don't know if you like him or if you hate him. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a camp of either uh, fuck you, uh, Vic, or I side with Vic. So, uh, I don't know how I feel. I do like the way how he seems to know what he wants, but at the same time, he doesn't seem to have a spine, where that's the one thing that Tommy does have. And it just goes to show how much ahead Chicago, uh, New York is than Chicago, because everybody that Tommy meets is just completely fucking stunned, not only just by who he is, but I'm pretty sure just, I don't know, I think it might be that that New York attitude that the Chicagans haven't seen. And if anybody screams New York, it's Tommy Egan for fuck's sake. Um, Isaac Keys as Diamond is fucking amazing. Dude, this actor is so interesting, is his portrayal. I never know what Isaac's gonna fucking do. Diamond, he is so interesting as a character. And I'm not sure if it's just the writing or the writing and Isaac's betrayal. It could just be them holding the shot a little bit longer, but you really connect with Diamond. From the first time you meet him and he's given a haircut in the prison and the guards give him a gift and he gives he gifts them his J's. And it's just one of those things where it's nice seeing somebody who actually is not necessarily willing to change in the power universe, because people fucking change all the time. But to see somebody who doesn't want to kill people anymore, to see somebody who wants to have a better life and wants to go legit and he's clean, and his relationship with his brother is a perfect example of it. How you see within a matter of seconds, everything goes from laughing to I'm fucking serious right now. Listen, I'm not playing around. And it's just great seeing new portrayals of interesting characters because it feels like in some shows, either some characters are duplicates of another character or when a new character comes in, it just, they're picking up either another character's storyline or just kind of the same characteristics. And it's just like, no, I don't want that. I want that character back or I want the original storyline or something. This show is doing an amazing job on its first episode and I really think everyone should check it out. If you have started this show, who is your favorite character that we've met so far? 
And if you've watched any of the Power shows, who is your favourite character, dead or alive, that we've met? But I must say, Brayden and Tariq, they're so close to being more likeable than uh, Tommy and Ghost. Because the way Michael Rainey Jr. and Gianni Paolo uh, portray these characters is fucking great. And if you've not seen the season finale of Power Book 2, Ghosts, please check it out. It's fucking great. Alright guys, I've been your host Luca and I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Peace. Tougher than a Teflon. I did dope, I stepped on. Real get the rest gone. Be that nigga, what else you want? Power, power, respect. I want that money and power and power. Money.